All right, we're going to continue with our media availabilities here this morning. We've now been joined by Kevin Harvick, driver of the number four gear wrench Ford for Stewart Haas Racing. Kevin, thank you for joining us this morning. If you don't mind, before we get started with questions from the media, if you don't you know, mind just telling us kind of what you thought as you traveled into Chicago and got settled here um, before today's events. Yeah, well, we came last night and did the track walk this morning and, and obviously was um, pretty impressed by you know, just the, the way that the track looked and the, really after driving it, the, the way that it flowed and everything that we did in the, in the simulator, you know, I think it, it lays out well. So, uh, you know, I think there's just a, there's a lot of excitement and buzz and, and, you know, when you create this kind of event to, um, to come into in a weekend, everybody kind of wants to see how it goes and, and what happens. So it's, um, you know, there's a lot of intrigue and I, I think that's, uh, that's really part of, of what makes a great event. For the media, if you have one, raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. We'll start with Bob, and then we'll work our way around the room. Bob Parker's Fox Sports. Was there anything that you saw, and maybe if you've talked to other drivers, saw during your track walk that you would ask NASCAR to potentially tweak for tomorrow? I think I think they got. I think they most of them that were here yesterday covered pretty much everything. So they moved some some tire packs and and changed some. I think the big talk was the was the brake markers. Um, you know, trying to make them something a little more visible. You know, they put some some orange tape around the the brake marker signs to try to make them a little bit more visible. And um, so, really, I you know, I think other than than small things like that, you just kind of have to wait and see what the race looks like. Obviously, Xfinity practice looked you know pretty pretty decent, um, and it looks like the cars have uh, good grip. And and so we'll just have to wait and see how it races and and kind of make adjustments from there. I would assume. All right, Lee. You made your Cup debut in 2001. Can you could you imagine two decades later doing something like this? I mean, it's you know you walk down the Michigan Avenue and it's like it's it's just so big and impressive, and you're so used to being racing places in rural areas of nothing of this magnitude. Well, it, it was just so much different when I started because of that. You know, racing at, at new racetracks in the middle of nowhere was was exciting, and you know, I think with the, with the way that the evolution of the the sport has evolved into doing things differently, we've raced inside of football stadiums, we've raced on street courses now, we've been on dirt, uh, all things raced in the rain, uh, all things that I would have thought you were crazy for, and pretty much everybody would have would have thought you were crazy for it at that particular time. So. It's just a it's a it's a constant evolution of of trying to make things different and exciting and and you know I think we live in a you know it's a it's a much different world that we live in, uh, much different attention span of of those watching for the most part, and you know I think it's just it requires a constant change and evolution to to keep it fresh and and exciting. So I think as you as you go through this weekend, I think it opens a lot of doors for us. I think we opened a lot of doors for ourselves when we went to the Coliseum and now you just got to figure out how to find that balance of, of how much you want to do things like this and in the Coliseum and, and you know whether dirt is right or wrong or you know is it a different track um, what what moves the needle and I think that's that's really what ultimately makes this fit event um, you know a success or um, you know I don't I don't know that you can make it a failure at this particular point but how much of a success uh, this this particular event is is you know, just measured on new eyeballs, uh, intrigue from from television viewers and and things like that. They're advertising it as an event, as a musical and racing event. Do we need more events? Do we need you know at the existing places? Do we need to make them more of an event? Well, I think when when you just let's just take Sonoma for example. When when we first went to Sonoma, nobody wanted to go. Now it's one of our destination races because you can talk your other half into going somewhere that they may not particularly want to be to watch a race, but there's other things to do. And, you know, whether it's um, a concert or a race, uh, y you can kind of find that middle ground to do something different with multiple things to do at the event. So it, it, it allows you to uh, uh, have a compromise uh, with, with the people who don't want to be at the race in order to have other things happening in a, in a cool city and, you know, not only uh, the event that we have, but there's also a lot of other things to do right here. You know, it's not like you got to drive 
an hour to get to the city or go to a baseball game or w whatever it may be. Um, you know, there's just a there's a lot of things that you can check boxes with in, in activities of, of things to do. All right, our next question will go to Daniel McFadden and then Jonathan and Dustin. Go ahead, Daniel. Uh, Daniel McFadden, FrenchRanch.com. Kevin, um, with this track as a driver, do you do you think there's any danger to maybe overthinking this track with it being, it is a road course, but with slightly different parameters? Yeah, I'm probably the wrong guy to ask. Uh, my road racing street course ability is uh, one event, um, and it was 1999 at the, around the LA Coliseum. So, um, and you know, I think that, that as, we've, as we've gone through all this, uh, to me, this one looks easier just because you can connect the dots and it's, you know, everybody's starting with the same experience level. It's not something where you can go and drive other cars or have a racing past of, of things that you've done. I think the good road racers are still going to rise to the top. But, you know, for, for me, with all the markers and the simplicity of, of um, you know, w the, the way that everything lays out, um, I think you can connect the dots and, and, and still do pretty good. So it's, it's different than, say, going to Road America for the first time where you've got a bunch of guys who have raced there in the Xfinity Series or raced there in, in other cars and have experience there or what, whatever the case may be. It's, it's um, you know, we're all starting from, from scratch. And, and um, for, for me, I, I feel more comfortable with where we're going to start than, than where we did at, say, Road America. Um, the only thing I really remember is that we ran through a big gutter and it would rip the rocker panels off. So we're one step above that here so far today from what I've seen. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, right over here. Uh, so you've had Jensen butting around uh, the Ford SHR sphere. Has he been a help for this weekend or how has it been just having him around? Yeah, I haven't spent much time around uh, Jensen, I've, I've had one conversation with him in the, in the two races. So, you know, I, I don't think his experience can, can hurt anything. I think as, as we go through the, the whole process, um, you know, it'll be interesting. I've not sat in any of the competition meetings or anything with him. So, you know, I think as, as we do that tomorrow, it'll be interesting to, to hear his feedback, but definitely can't hurt. And after walking around the track and seeing the different characteristics of it and the different specifics, how do you think the sim time that you spend is going to translate over to the real racing? Well, really, the, the biggest thing for me is just, you know, memorizing the track. I think that's the, you know, what, what direction am I, am I coming up on next? And, and so, you know, that, that'll be the most important thing to me is, is getting all the new markers on the actual racetrack. I think the lap time will be a little bit faster than than what we practiced at in our simulator. So um, just memorizing those markers and getting comfortable with, with exactly um, where I need to be in the braking zones and how wide the racetrack is, which corner's coming up next, where all the bumps are. Uh, that'll be the, the main thing for me is to remember all that, memorize all that stuff in the first 50. All right, we're gonna go Dustin, Nate, and then Kelly, and then we have a question over here. Go ahead, Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. I believe you were in the room when I asked uh, Chase about uh, the restart zone here, and I'm just curious your feelings about it, and I'm assuming you heard him talk about you know, the, the way Coda ended from his viewpoint was embarrassing for everybody involved. If you kind of felt the same way about that situation and if this is maybe a way to kind of solve the problem. Yeah, I think, you know, I think the, the theory was to spread the cars out more. Uh, getting into turn one, so it seemed to work well at, at some of the racetracks like Portland and, and places that that uh, well the place that we've seen it so far. Uh, Sonoma didn't really have that that same type of problem with the way that it's laid out. So um, hopefully, you know, I think when you look at Portland, it it um, allowed the cars to get spread out and not have that that huge effect of four or five cars nose to tail. And and so, you know, it's it's a tough balance just because of the fact that the car is so so durable. Um, you know, I think and it's tough just because you know the car will do that and, and you start to get frustrated and, and participate just because you, you at some point probably were on the other end of it getting spun out and, and um, so it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a fine balance. Again, uh, Ryan Blaney's incident into a concrete barrier. I know NASCAR's talked about, you know, they're going to move forward and, and, and look at other tracks, but just 
from a driver's perspective to see something like that happen? Is there a frustration or is there an understanding of cars are going to find different spots and can't get everything covered or that's not a that's not a good excuse? Yeah, I don't think that's a good excuse. You know, I think that 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 spot should have been covered. Um, you know, we've we've gone to some of these new racetracks and and had bare walls and and you know, I think that's that's probably just needs to be done a little bit more aggressively in, in order to make those those situations right. Um, it's just a firm reminder that we can hit anything anywhere. It's just, you know, you're, you're, you're not guarding for the everyday accidents. Obviously, it helps them. But you're guarding for the weird incidents like we had with Kyle Busch at Daytona and Ryan's was very similar to that. So I think that's that's really what you're what you're looking for. So definitely needs to be a, a little bit more thorough on on that side of, of airing to too much, not enough. All right, we're gonna go to Nate and then Kelly. Go ahead, Nate. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Uh, Kevin, when Chase was in here, he was said that he was kind of pleasantly surprised uh, how good the course looked, given all the logistics and everything that needed to happen with the fence and concrete barriers and all the stuff they'd put in. Um, and he said that gave him confidence that NASCAR could do this in other cities. Uh, your perspective on that is, is, did you arrive and think, wow, this is in better shape than I expected? And does this give you a sense that like, hey, NASCAR maybe can do this more often? Or, or is it you know, coming out of the clash in Wilkesboro, is this kind of the direction NASCAR's already been moving and you guys knew they could do this? Well, I'm, I'm fairly certain they own all the barriers. So it definitely opens the door to, to, to being able to, to do this type of event in other spots. I think you just have to, you have to measure the success and, and how far it moves the needle and, and know that it, you may not have to spend as much money because you don't have to buy the barriers next time, but the, you know, sp the amount of money that's being spent to put this event on, there's obviously a, there's obviously, there has to be a, um, you know, a level of, of um, I guess, excitement that, that moves the needle in order to, to keep doing that. So, you know, I think it's um, it definitely you have to start somewhere and you have to step out of that box and, and do things differently. And, you know, I think we have a lot of room to, to still explore and, um, you know, do things and show our product off in, in different cities to different people. I think they told us there was over 80 percent of the fans here this weekend will be uh, people who have never watched a NASCAR race. So. Yeah, if you're going to grow the sport, you're going to have to do stuff like this. And and I'm the, I'm the same when I when I walk the track. And luckily, Julie was the the last person that, that I saw before we walked across the track. They've just done a good job, and you know it's it flowed well on the simulator. And I'm sure it looks like it flowed well in in practice uh, for the for the Xfinity cars. And I don't expect anything different with with our cars. So it's been, you know, from the time I walked in the hotel and you know the way that it was organized and structured and um, you know it felt like it felt like old school NASCAR to me, you know, with with the just the things that that have happened since I walked off the plane to to come into the racetrack, into the hotel, and into the racetrack, and and so it's been um, it's been a great experience so far. All right, we're gonna go to Kelly. Just a heads up, we have about five minutes left with Kevin, so we're gonna get to as many people as we can. But if you can help me with not asking a lot of questions at once, that is helpful. Thank you. KellyCrandallRacer.com. Kevin, is this an event that you have to come to with just an open mind? There's been so much talk and hype, everything leading into this event. Obviously, it's so different. Do you try to come here and just give it a chance before coming in with maybe preconceived notions of how it's going to be? I think you have to because I made the mistake at the clash the first time we went uh, and said, you know, I thought it was going to be a disaster and it turned into a great event and great race. And um, I think you have to just do it because you just don't know. It, you just don't know how these types of things are going to turn out. So an open mind definitely is is better than than walking in just trying to figure out how to make it fail and trying to figure out all the flaws in it because there are, there are going to be things that, that probably don't go 100% right. But um, going through all these new type of events kind of changes your mindset to um, how you approach it because you see the enthusiasm, right? Like you can feel it. You can see it. Um, you definitely don't have this many colleagues sitting in your press room on a weekly basis. So there's obviously something different this week that, that moves the needle. Real quick, I just wanted to know, because this is so different, you're racing in a city, the sight lines, everything around the track is so different. Will you have a chance? Can you even take that in from the car of being up against buildings and different things like that? Well, it's obviously going to be different, but I think once you fall out of those first few laps and you start to pick up all those reference points, it'll just settle into 
you know, the next corner. So that's the, you know, I think the, the part that, that as a competitor, you kind of fall into this trap of not really enjoying the surroundings and, and all the things that go with that. I think they'll, you'll, you'll probably see some cool pictures of, of things as you come out of the event and, and realize, you know, just the, the magnitude of coolness that, that went along with, with what we're getting, getting ready to do. All right, we'll go Jerry and then to Jay. Go ahead, Jerry. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires. That, that just looking ahead real quick to Loudon. You won three of the last eight there. What's so good about that track that no matter what the package is, that you run strong? Yeah, it's just been a it's been a great. Our, our flat track stuff has has been really good. Our short track stuff has has always been been really good. And I think as as we go, um, you know, this year our our short track stuff is is in the in the same category. So it's it's definitely a racetrack that that we're looking forward to to going to and and. Um, you know, I can't wait to uh, to finally, hopefully, get to Victory Lane. It's it's uh, after Nashville having the fastest car and having a tire go flat, and and Phoenix and a couple of the other places where it just seems like it all hasn't come together. But they're doing a they're doing a great job of putting fast cars on the racetrack, and and um, Loudon is one of those places that just checks a lot of boxes in order for us to go up there and hopefully have a good weekend. All right, we'll go Jay and then Jordan. Go ahead, Jay. Hi, Kevin. Uh, Jay Cohen, Associated Press. We've heard from a couple of drivers so far that the, the sponsor interest in this race in particular was, was pretty high. Did you experience in that? And in your experience, like, is, and how much of that has to do with just being in this market and all the act activation possibilities and, and you know, being in the city that's such a business center? I'm spoiled. Um, our sponsors have been in place for a long time, but I know that the gear wrench group that, that is on the, on the car um, – you know they've brought a lot of people and have activated uh, through throughout the weekend. Um, we don't have a lot of activity out outside of that, but you know I know that there's a, a lot of intrigue. Um, you know from from people wanting to watch and and uh, you get the get the question of of uh, what what do you think it's going to be like? And it's come up several times in our meet and greets over the last several weeks. So there's a lot of intrigue there. Our stuff's just been sponsor stuff has just been in place for for a long time. Go ahead, Jordan. The athletic. When you look at the 36 race schedule, um, if you could, how would you kind of lay it out in terms of the balance between super speedways, short tracks, intermediates, road courses, street courses, etc. In terms of the number of races you kind of like would see, you know, at each kind of type of track. Yeah, that's that's a great that's a great question. You know, I think that obviously the the road course number is going up. It seems like everybody wants to have um, more short tracks and and things that that go along with with that side of the world. So I think you you know I think you have a lot of room to to be flexible with um, whatever whatever is the the hot ticket right you know I think that's the that's the most important thing what's the hot ticket what's going to move the what's going to put the most butts in the grandstands and the most eyeballs on TV so if it's if it's short tracks and street courses then you know we need to migrate to a few more of those and and you know I think there's there's still a lot of room for Canada and Mexico and, and a lot of things in in North America to to, to move to that we have been at before. And Montreal was always one of the marquee races. It opened up a different fund from the sponsorship side and, and was always full of people. So, um, you know, I think there's, there's, a, there's a lot of room to move, to move stuff around, especially from places that have a couple of, of dates that, that um, you know, traditionally don't have the, the best crowds and could be good one race tracks. Well, you know me, I'd change everything all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd, uh, if it was me, then Chicago is going to be a great city, but I'd say I'll see you guys in about five years. Um, you can be excited about it for the next four, and we'll be back, uh, you know, through through the rotation. And I'd rotate the championship race and the playoff races and, and create some sort of system that made sure that there was enough road courses and short tracks and everything in the, in the last ten. But I, I'd move them all. Um, you know, there's traditional races like the Daytona 500 and – uh, the Southern 500, and and um, can you? I mean, I guess there's really not many more than that. I got the sick Coke 600. Um, yeah, maybe the Bristol Summer Race, and everything from there would be free game. And you know, I'd I'd make sure that you know the the markets and racetracks are held accountable to to have the 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 proper amount of people in the seats. And if it's not going the way that it should, then move them around. 
All right. Apologies. I'm not going to be able to get to everyone. But, Kevin, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it, and we wish you the best of luck this weekend.